Hello, this is Pastor Matthew Woods from Grace Lutheran Church in New Albany, Indiana, <clears throat> and this is the weekly devotion for October 9th, 2023. Today's title, God's Love for Ceramics. Clay pots in biblical days were used for pretty much everything like ancient Tupperware. The Dead Sea Scrolls, for example, were stored in pots to preserve them. In, in fact, in Jeremiah 32, Jeremiah buys a field, buys property in the middle of Babylon taking over everything, and stores the deed in a, in a clay jar to preserve it. Clay pots were used to carry water. They, were store, they would store grains, the oils. Uh, shoot, they, they would use them for everything. Everything uh, that was the most functional item on the planet at the time. The best part about clay pots, maybe in today's terms, as we haven't found a pile of them floating in the middle of the ocean, along with the discarded bottles like we do today. <laughs> so common were clay pots that every archaeological find um, has pieces of pottery, thousands of pieces that they find, each one uh, telling them a little more about that time period. Now, along with this, I really like uh, Dr. Reed Lessing's observations on Jeremiah 18 and in, in chapter uh, 12 of his book, Overcoming Life's Sorrows, Learning from Jeremiah. We're going through that in our class, our Bible class on Sunday right now. Some of us will remember <clears throat> that we are working uh, a lot of this uh, also parallel to our Grief Shared class, which makes this pretty meaningful book. Well, he says, in Jer Jeremiah sees a miracle in the making. A potter is working at a wheel with a, a formless uh, clump of clay. A little pressure here, a little more there, and the vessel begins to emerge out of the shapeless mud. This is how God works in our lives. He is the potter, we are the clay. In spite of everything we've been through, we are still useful, we are still beautiful. This is on page 139 and 140 of his book. Now that's the nature of mourning, isn't it? I was talking with a woman this week who found out she has cancer, stomach cancer, it is devastating. I talked with another who's mourning the loss of a child. Uh, mourning makes a lot of people feel like they've turned into a mass of clay. Short of everything feels formless and void. Tohu wabuhu, which is the Hebrew word for chaotic. It usually has a lot to say about that, expressing this little Hebrew word in his book, but it means chaos, formless and void. That's how we feel when we mourn. But life goes along seemingly well in hand, uh, and then suddenly there's a fall, and then there's a broken arm, for the third time perhaps. Or the little girl meant to be a flower girl uh, in the wedding suddenly breaks an ankle just by playing with her friends right before the wedding. Chaos. <laughs> or as in the case of those participating in grief share class yesterday, it's never, it's still shocking to imagine oneself needing a great grief share class. Chaos. How did I get here? Plans were made with spouses that never came to fruition. Dreams were laid for children were suddenly quieted. Uh, Thanksgiving will be different this year. The absent will be felt. Um, some things feel like they, they turn us back into a mass of clay, or just a clump of clay, formless and void. In some sense, they are. Things are being reshaped. Things are changing. Trusting in the Lord to help shape that future when our emotions struggle just to get through the day ends up being the biggest challenge then. But Reed points out that the word for potter, yatsar in Jeremiah 18.2, uh, is also the word for formed. It is the same word used in Jeremiah 1.5 where the Lord tells us, Before I formed you, yatsar in the womb, I knew you. It's also the word used by Moses in Genesis chapter 2-7, which says, Then the Lord formed Yatsar Adam from the dirt. There's a creative aspect to the word, um, a building of something, generating a work of art of, of some kind. Now, I've known a few artists making pots is often done by instinct more than uh, some kind of set standard. It's artwork in motion, and it takes the full attention of the artist constantly to look at and touch and be involved with that piece of work. Every pot is unique, even though it may be similar in other ways. You and I are works of art. A little pressure here, a little there. Sometimes the clay loses its shape again. 
and the potter starts over, reshaping and lovingly, actively, and consistently working towards a final product. Thankfully and truthfully, we never actually reach the point until we are uh, we reach our heavenly kingdom where we are fired and glazed with the image of Jesus placed all over us, a final work of art. The goal is always to be reshaped in his image all along, to be holy while still being the individual God makes us. Moses will still be Moses, but a finished Moses. You will still be you, but a completely new you, finished you. Until then, we are shaped and reshaped by the Lord. We certainly don't want that final product to be of the world. We want it to be of the Lord. That's the best way. The shaping often comes, by the way, in subtle ways. <clears throat> the way we see our parents love one another. Seeing how others handle their losses and their sicknesses. Um, who we fellowship with and, and who it is that influences us. Perhaps we're inspired by a teacher or like me, like a, uh, by a DCE, Director of Christian Education or Youth Director. Someone may have, a, may have helped us with our, with our confidence to be built up and believed in us when we didn't believe in ourselves. Could be a number of experiences of, uh, with people and of people. Typically, it's an accumulation of things that shape us, and they keep shaping us, don't they? I'm certainly not the same person I was when I was 21, thank goodness. Much has changed me and grown me and helped me, and, and even uh, each little bit of pressure here and there comes from that potter, working through others, working through uh, his grace and his providence. My favorite reference to clay jars, though, is in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 through 12. But we have this treasure, that is the cross and the resurrection of Jesus. We have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed in every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then, death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. The clay jar is our body, of course. Clay refers to the dust of the earth. It's a play on words, from which Adam, for example, was formed. God sard. Paul, however, calls us to Notice a distinction in these clay jars that he's talking about, namely because of what's inside. It is the treasure that's inside, namely Jesus. They look normal enough. They certainly are not wearing capes or leaping tall buildings. These jars are not immune to the hazards of the world, quite exposed to it, in fact. Yet here they are in their humble state, standing out because of what's inside of them, enduring, overcoming, succeeding. So easy to underestimate these clay pots. Because of the treasure inside, the all-surpassing power uh, is from God, not from us, right? And so we are not crushed. Troubled but not despairing without hope, we know there's a future yet. We are persecuted and harassed and relentlessly pursued, but we are never abandoned. The potter is always at the wheel, struck down in death like everyone else but not destroyed. Not destroyed in the hands of the potter, uh, remade one last time in death into a permanent new creation that eventually nothing can hurt and nothing can harm again. The reason? We are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, given over to that cross and his forgiveness and all the sacrifice that Jesus made, and then given the life of the resurrection also in our mortal body. The clay pot. Jesus loves ceramics. He loves us. Jesus is not done with you. It may feel like we're done with him for now, for some of us, perhaps. Your world may be in chaos right now. For others of us, it may be exactly where we wanted to be, you know, filled with grace and gratitude and hope. Either way, grace will do its work to edge all of us closer to a version of you that is, uh, that knows Jesus to its fullest sense, which is the goal. The potter looks at you as a work of art. It's his favorite work of art. 
We may be a bit skewed at the moment, but the Lord will not stop working to bring us home to him. May faith in the Lord bless you to trust the Lord for what results from the potter's work. May God bless you this week. Thanks for uh, being with me today. I appreciate that. And I'm always glad when you can join me. And I will look forward to seeing you next week too. In the meantime, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace in Jesus. Amen.